Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here as ever. On today's episode, I want to make a Makume Gane pendant. Before we jump in, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is Honey. Honey is a money-saving tool that works phenomenally, and I make sure that it is installed on all of my browsers and all the computers that we use here at the shop because I have saved hundreds upon hundreds of dollars using Honey. It takes two clicks to install. Make sure that at the end of the video, you go to my link in the description, you give it a click, you install it. It's completely free, and you're going to start saving money straight away. Thank you, Honey, for sponsoring the video. We need to jump right in. Now, you remember back in the UK a pretty long time, Ago, I made some Makume Gane. I made it out of this stuff here, copper and nickel. Now, I made sure to save what I made, and I never ended up making anything from it. Now, why is that? Well, you get busy, you move to the other side of the world, you plan moving to the other side of the world, you know, and, and then, then all of a sudden you, you forget about it. But this is some pretty cool material. I have this right here. This is a piece of flat bar. This is twisted. This looks pretty cool. There's a lot of contrast. Pretty bold. But I also have this piece of mosaic makume right here. I say mosaic makume because the pattern isn't on the edge like this. The pattern's on the end of the bar. You can just see it right here. It looks beautiful. And I think that this is how we're going to get the coolest looking pendant. So good. I have the makume gane. I need to think of a design. So I'm going to sit down with a pencil and a sketch pad and start thinking about that design. Now, in this design, I want to incorporate a little more than just the Makume Gane, because I want to use this as an opportunity to practice more stone setting. Of course, I'm definitely not getting addicted. So I'm going to work on that design. So what I had in my head was something based off of triangles, but I messed around and kind of had to think about how cool you could use a square form, made some just very rough, fast sketches just to get the brain juices flowing. I think this is what I'm going to work towards. I'm gonna to make a 25 by 25 millimeter, one inch by one inch triangle. And we are going to attempt to parve set ourselves some diamonds in one corner of the triangle. I think it's gonna be a very interesting design, nice and contemporary looking. But I have a slight issue in the fact that this material right here, it's not 25 millimeter, by 25 millimeters. It's pretty narrow. It's only about 20 by 20. So I'm going to light the forge, cut off a piece, forge it down so it's wide enough for our little pendant. It's cracking, so I'm going to stop and we're going to make the most of this material and cut our triangle to be as large as possible without having cracks in it. Okay, you've got to have a look at this. I just put this in some pickle. Oh, look at that pattern come through on the makume. It just looks glorious. So this pickle right here, this takes off the scale off the, uh, off the copper there. Look how amazing that looks. Okie dokie, I've got this thing flattened out. Now, I haven't introduced you to this yet. This is our disc sander, variable frequency drive. Why do we use this when we have a belt grinder? Well, the belt grinder doesn't like to make things extremely flat. It does a decent job, but uh, with that belt spinning around there, not super duper flat. Disc sander, however, that nice machine surface behind a very thin piece of sandpaper ensures we can get things much flatter we can also get some very nice surface finishes. This is a 320 grit piece of wet and dry on there, and this is looking very beautiful. We don't have the contrast that we had earlier. There are ways that we can fix that. What we do need to do, however, is we need to cut out that triangle. Uh, 
Okay, I've got my little triangle laid out. So we're gonna use the little porter band with a little piece of Velcro holding the trigger down and a little trigger on the floor. I'm gonna have to be really careful though, because that's a tiny piece of material and I wanna keep all my fingers. Ugly duggly, I've got this thing polished up. I cut it on the bandsaw, I filed it. I then went back to the grinding room and I thinned it down a little bit because it was a little too thick. It's now a much nicer thickness. And I brought it up to a beautiful buffed, polished finish. It's very shiny. One thing though, we don't have a huge amount of contrast in the Makume, so I'm gonna have to work out something on that. What I now need to do though, with this polished piece of Makume, is we need to turn it into a pendant which means I need to drill holes and lay out and plan where my stone setting is gonna go. I think this is gonna be the front side. I'm gonna put a hole right in here. So in the ball vise right now is a little brass practice plate where I've been practicing lots of stone setting lately. I am just having a ton of fun with this stuff and it is a fascinating thing to learn. I tell you, this is getting me super excited learning about this stuff, trying it, failing at it, overall having a great amount of fun. I'm enjoying it a huge amount. But I now gotta think about how I'm going to fixture this shiny little piece without damaging it. And I'm gonna try a little machinist trick that you've seen me use on the channel before. Picked it up from John Saunders, NYC CNC. We're gonna use some masking tape and some super glue. First thing, a little bit of masking tape. I'm gonna put a little bit of masking tape on the part two. Dribble on a little bit of super glue. Now the super glue is gonna adhere to the masking tape but not to the brass or Makume Gane. There we go. Okay, with that there, I'm gonna grab some drills. This one here I'll probably do. I'm gonna use these dividers to lay out where my holes are gonna go. Okay, now I'm gonna take a center punch in the air graver, give it a little mark. Now it's time to drill it. So here's the little micromotor. I have a four to one speed reducer. It'll give it some more torque. I'm gonna put the bit in the collet, give it a tighten, give it a little bit of lube, and we're gonna drill this hole. Nice and slowly does it. Uh-oh, that hole looks a little skew I Think I might be able to fix it. And we're through. Just gonna deburr it. So now I gotta work out where I'm gonna put the stones, a little beeswax. The stones will stick to this. So now we gotta play with the stones. So I gotta work out what size stones I wanna use and where I wanna put them. I think I like this. That's a one and a half millimeter stone. How about we see what a two millimeter stone looks like? Oh, there we go, I think this is gonna be the one. Wow, that's a much bigger stone. Oh wait, this isn't a one mil, this is a one millimeter stone, not a millimeter and a half. That would explain it. This is two millimeters, so it's twice the size. So now let's put some more stones on. Oh, this is exciting. This is gonna be a little triangular pave, which is a, a style of setting. It's about kind of paving a surface, making it look like it's all diamonds. A little triangular pave in there, some bead setting to do. It's gonna be horrendously difficult, and it is the first time I've ever tried it. Nothing quite like a little jump in the deep end, a little challenge, nothing quite like that to get the blood pumping and, uh, and make your hands shake, which is not so good when you're dealing with CZs, by the way. CZs, not diamonds. What I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna take out one stone at a time and I'm gonna mark the center of where that stone was. Then I know exactly where I've got to drill the holes and begin the settings. Oh, I dropped it. So now for the setting bar, let's give this one a measure. Two millimeters exactly. Let's open up those holes. 
Okay, now I need to cut out the material between all the holes with a flat graver. Okay, I have what will be the beads isolated. What are the beads? They are the pieces of material that are gonna support our stones. I'm also aware that the triangle of holes I made is not in line with the triangle that we did make. At this point, I'm committed and we're gonna have to find a, find a solution that's gonna allow for that. For now, we need to clear up those holes so that the CZs can sit since we mess it up and then it is on to actually securing the gems. Okay, so let me update you on where we are with this little triangular pave setting. I got those beads pushed down over the diamonds. What are the beads? They're those little round balls you see that are holding the diamonds down. I got them pushed down and rounded off. I then cut around the edges, trying to do a bright cut, which is a cut in the surrounding material that is designed to be shiny so that it's gathering more light, pushing it into those stones. By the way, if I keep calling them diamonds, I apologize, they're CZs, stones. The bright cuts are reflecting light into the stones to make them pop, make them look more more vibrant and it's going okay. Now the way that I've been going about this has been kind of very much in line with a DVD that I bought that was made by Sam Alfano and this is the best success that I've had with these Pave style settings so far so it's going well but there are still several issues such as the twist. I mean this is just completely my fault I should have spotted this when I was laying out but that triangle is terribly twisted I used the bright cuts to adjust it a little bit to make it less twisted but I am certainly gonna need to fix that and make a good improvement on it so what I'm gonna do is I am going to start grinding on that Makume grinding the triangle into a different triangle into a twisted triangle I've already got some scribe lines on the piece so I'm gonna work proud of that start grinding I hopefully have this piece look a little better We've got the piece buffed and looking beautiful. I have started working on a little silver, watch my what's it, loop thing that's gonna go through that hole so this can go on a chain. That is gonna be soldered through this pendant, but the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna see if we can work on the contrast of this. Makume Gane, this, this particular Makume Gane is nickel and copper, and right now it's not really popping all that much in terms of the different colors, so we're gonna try putting it in some Acid. Now I've tested uh, with a CZ to see if the acid would affect the gem. It didn't seem like it did and I'm not going to leave it in there very long because what I also don't want to do is I don't want to destroy the settings of those gems. We're just going to put it in there quickly then we're going to rinse it out, neutralize that acid very thoroughly once we have the contrast. In we go. Oh wow already that's popping so much more. Okay I'm going to rinse it off. It's popping so much more. I'm going to solder this silver and then it's going to be finished.
am so thrilled to have this little pendant done, to have played around with some more Makume Gane. It's just a fascinating material, and there is so much to explore with it, to doing my first pave setting cluster like that. Huge amounts of fun, an unbelievable education for me. Just this is this is fascinating stuff. The world of the small things. I'm loving it. I really hope you've enjoyed following along. As we round out the video, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is Honey. What is Honey? It is a money-saving tool that takes two clicks to install. It's completely free, and when you reach checkout at over 30,000 sites, it will automatically search for the best coupon code for you. I've saved hundreds upon hundreds if not at this point thousands of dollars. It is just utterly phenomenal and there is no reason not to install it. Installing is as easy as going joinhoney.com forward slash Alex, links in the description. One click, add to Chrome, and it's done. Installation was a success. Honey is now up here and active. This is a great time to check out some of the new merch on the website at alexsteelshop.com because you're gonna get a discount once you've installed Honey. The new Cavalry Saber t-shirt is very, very cool. We're gonna be back to that project very soon, but you'll see we go to checkout. Oh, would you look at that? Coupon codes, apply coupon. Honey pulled it up automatically, and we just got a $10.60 discount on the merch. Go check it out over at joinhoney.com forward slash Alec. The link is in the description. Thank you, Honey, for sponsoring the episode. It has been a pleasure bringing you guys along with this journey. In case you're curious, where is the Cavalry Saber? We're waiting on equipment. We're waiting on supplies. We're trying to make sure that we can really pull off this guard. So there is this lull in between there. But it's great because we're still getting to practice. We're still getting to learn. And we're still having a lot of fun. It's a pleasure, as always, bringing you along for this. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.